Uh, Pat, listen, <laughs> I said to one of the guys in EPCR, you make damn sure you get me Bristol now. We can make a story out of that. <laughs> I couldn't uh, believe it, mate, when they're doing the draw. And I saw, and yeah, obviously when the tears were done at the end of last season, I said, oh, it looks kind of, and I said to the mole, oh man, a pitcher, a pitcher's going to come out. And I was watching the draw and the balls are coming out and which pool and I'm going, oh no, we're going. <laughs> but hey, it's, uh, it's another way to get back. Yeah, look, um, it's very different at the moment because we've got COVID. There's going to be very few of us in that ground on Sunday. It's it's an eerie place. I, uh, I'm very fortunate to be able to get in covering games. But the whole the whole thing, it, are you having to sort of park all that? It, it's an it's another game of rugby, but it whatever way you do it with the ex Connacht people, John and. Uh, you know, you've got uh, Jake Keenan, Nee, Peter, Pete McCabe, Connor McPhillips. Yeah. You must be talking about it, but how do you park it? How do you actually do that in your head? Um, I, I think we, 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 I think pretty much all coaches, but certainly us, when we, um, when COVID and we were returning to play with our crowds, you know, we, we addressed it straight away around the fact that the crowds are fantastic, but it is a bonus. At the end of the day, you know, you think about why do you play rugby? You know, it's not about, well, I want to go play rugby so I can impress a crowd. You know, it's about, I love the game. I want to get in. I love playing with my mates and I go out there and I want to, you know, achieve something with my mates. And then we were, and then now we've sort of just become, because the first couple of weeks was, was different, you know, but it, yeah, there is no noise, there's no crowd, it's only what you could hear. And now it's become a bit routine. So it's not surprising the amount of away teams winning you know, in all competitions uh, because and it just shows the influence that the crowd does have on, on all areas of the game. But um, I, I watched a couple of games at Sports Ground as I keep an eye on Connacht and uh, it's hard to imagine because, you, you know, you know what it's like and you see and normally even even when I watched some games before uh, COVID struck, when I left, I could see faces I knew, you know, and, and that's a nice way to see things. And um, But so, yeah, I think it's certainly... Um, it's certainly a, uh, a disappointment. There is no crowd there because it is something special. Yeah, people, you know, people. That, that's what people are talking about. I'm trying to push them on actually to, to the to the game itself. Looking forward to Sunday. Uh, Bristol mightn't be well known to the people who be listening to this. So, who to look out for? I know you're not going to tell me the team, but uh, who's worth keeping an eye on, and what type of rugby? Can we expect you to play? What 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 are you what are you setting up as? What's what's your your ethos? Well, you know, my ethos said the same as well as Connacht. It's it's about it's not about running and everything, kicking everything, mauling everything. It's about um, having the skill set and the ability to adjust and adapt to whatever, regard the opposition, the weather, the conditions. You know, so you know, I always similar to here. It's so funny, actually. Well, my first year. Guess what the crowd was saying? <laughs> Similar to the sports crowd in my first year, kick the ball, kick the ball. <laughs> and, um, you know, but as I build a build a game, it's about taking the fair out and getting guys to, you know, to not be afraid if it's on from 90 metres out. Well, let's go. But you've got to have the skill set. And then you add all the different pieces as we have, like like we did in Connick, similar to here. But it's about the guys going out there and to, to make good decisions, understanding that they've got op different ways of winning that game. And we got a factor in the opposition, the weather, and, and, the, and where we're at. So, um, you know, you can sp you'll be able to see similar things. There's no doubt we, we like to, to move the ball, and there's no doubt. But ultimately, the number one thing that we all like is to win the game, and Connick will be exactly the same. So, you know, as far as players, there's, 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 you know, there's some good, similar to Connick, there's some good local players coming through, you know. Um, in, the, in the scrum, we've got two really good scrum halves that actually remind me of Kieran Marmion. Um, and Caelan Blade, you know, and Harry Randall and, and Andy Uren, you know, two young guys. And, and when I watch them, it's so funny. I always think of Marmo and Caelan. And it's great to see those two still going well as well. You know, um, you know, Callum Sheedy, he's come through. Uh, he was like third. Uh, he was in the academy, came through, and we invested a lot of time, similar to that we did with Jack Carty when everyone was saying we needed to buy a, 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 an experienced team, but I knew we didn't have the money. But... 
you know, it was about bringing trust in these guys, let them make their mistakes, but let them grow with experience and to see Jack come through and represent Ireland and now Callum come through and represent Wales. So there's so many similarities in, uh, uh, you know, in, in both teams. So, um, and then of course, you know, Bundy, Bundy will be there and, you know, we've got, um, obviously we would have had Semi, but we've got, you know, Siali, Siali Piertel's there and, you know, there's some, there's some sprinkle dust on top of that. To, to add to the the good homegrown local players coming through, and then you got Joe Joyce as well. I got to mention Joe Joyce, you know, um, because he's his dad's Irish and uh, he loves uh, the, the Irish, and it'll be a big, a massive. Uh, he's so keen to be involved this week, and uh, he's a good local boy from here as well. And yeah, look, it's uh, we don't know what we're going to get on on Sunday night. Uh, it could well be a uh, could be wet and windy. Might be, it might be nice and calm. Both sides coming in off defeats, Pat. Um, so this is this is must-win territory for both teams. So are you expecting another shootout type game, or uh, could both sides be a little bit aware that a defeat is going to end their Champions Cup uh, for this season? Yeah, I think there's no doubt both teams want to win, but that's that's the goal. You know, but the process of going about trying to achieve the win, that's that's the key. And I know Friendly will have that sorted from his end, we'll have that sorted from our end. And that's what makes the game special. You know, that it's a Heineken Cup game, Champions Cup game. Both teams need to win. And it's about going out there and, you know, and um, and executing your your performance for the team. And, you know, uh, um, and as, as, as um, I think, you know, one area that's very similar um, and that we've... As with Connacht and with the Bristol boys, you know, the, it's going to be a great game because uh, the boys will go to the end. And uh, so it's an exciting, it's an exciting fixture. I mean, I was so pleased, you know, I look at Alton Delam was superb. Finley, Dennis, uh, Hef, you know, Owen Masterton playing in the second row, you know, and obviously Mamo and Jack. And it's just so good to see those guys leading the way now. You know, Alton calling lineouts, man, that was, no one was uh, would allow Alton to call lineouts before. And he, he did a great job. And, you know, and 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 Hef now and the and the Irish team. You know, like just their confidence and experience, and that's what you wanted. You wanted these homegrown boys and the guys that've been there. I mean, I still have on my wall a uh, picture that I was given with uh, Finley Beelham and Alton Delan, uh, Nathan White, Marmo, and um, and Robbie on it because the first time we had five Connacht players on the field for a Six Nations game it was given me by a season ticket holder supporter, and I. I Put that on my wall because I'm pr- proud of the fact that, you know, certainly Alton and Finley, when I first arrived, people were telling me they weren't going to make it in the academy. And when I talked to them, they told me their goals and I watched them train. I knew these boys would come through to, and to see them still leading there is awesome. I'll finish with this because I know you're a man that that, that, that looks forward all the time. Uh, and that's, that's what you have to do in, in sport if you want to be successful. But sometimes in your mind's eye, do you, do you ever think back to your time here and and in terms of just does it bring a, a sense of just of satisfaction and the fact that you left Connacht in a better place than when you came here? Um, it's, it's honestly my highlight, absolute coaching highlight because of what we achieved but how much, um, you know, it was more than just the playing group. It was the community. It was everyone involved from Sligo, Leach and Roscommon, Mayo, and Galway, everyone got united, got behind the team, and 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 the team got into the community, and it was, it was just a wonderful time. And and there's no, I use that as my example, and I use the fact that, you know, people will say you got money, but so many people have so much money and still don't achieve things. You know, and what that showed that, that no one could look at the fact of our budget or our we had didn't have resources. It was about everyone coming together and doing their bit. And, you know, and I remember at the time, if, if I went to a place that did have suddenly have more resources and certainly Bristol, the t- template won't change. That ultimately, you know, you've got to get your vision right. You've got to get your relationships right, get your game right, your culture, your leadership. All of those pieces have to come in regardless of where you, where you sit. And um, I always use Connick as a reminder that um, the impossible can happen and become possible if people believe and, and follow the plan. Thank you for your time. Great to talk to you. We look forward to seeing you and all the ex connacht guys in the sports ground on Sunday. We'll probably be able to wave at you from a distance. It's a different world now. Everything's COVID-related. Uh, have a safe trip. Have a good game. And we'll talk again soon.
Cheers, mate. Is Rob and um, and Al still involved in the uh, the Craggy the podcast? They'll be there. You've Rob and Lindley and Alan and Dave. Oh, Lindley, of course. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Dave. It's the same crew. We're in the same place. So uh, if you turn around when you walk onto the pitch, we'll be we'll be standing on the terrace. I'll wave to you. Look forward to seeing you. All.